Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna. Today is Vlogtober 31, so it is Halloween, October 31st, 2018. I'm coming to you from Manassas, Virginia, where I have a short vlog today that has some seasonal children's literature and a craft. So um, our children's literature, I actually have a few because I had said I did want to give an advance on some books for the Thanksgiving holiday celebrated here in America. And so um, this will give some chance for you to order them, try to procure, procure them, get them from your library if you're interested at all. My first one is my favorite one. It's called Thanksgiving Wish and it's written by Michael Rosen. And I used this book um, along with, I did a co-teaching um, for Writer's Workshop when I was teaching third grade. And this was a book that we used every year to teach a, a writing activity. It was our prompt. We would read the Thanksgiving Wish. And this is a special story about a family. And um, the family spends every Thanksgiving at uh, Bubby's house, which is uh, the Yiddish word for grandmother. And um, they have a, a tradition that is carried on where Bubby would save every wishbone that um, she had during the year from chicken, turkey, whatever she had. She saved the wishbones, cleaned them, and saved them for the children to make wishes on Thanksgiving, which is a lovely family tradition. Um, and so the teacher and I would save all of ours through the year and um, use them that day for our writing activity, the, where the children would write about what they would wish for. Um, and there's little Amanda, she's our, our main character in the story besides Bubby, and she's making her Thanksgiving wish. But this year, Bubby has passed away, and the family um, is going to be different now. And on Thanksgiving, that's a particular time of missing her for Amanda because they look around and realize no one had been saving the wishbones that year and um, they only had the one from the turkey that day. So um, there's no grandmother to wish with and they do solve that problem somewhat, but um, it's a, just a special story of a family tradition and it's beautifully told. It's rather a long story. So um, if a child's reading it themselves, I'm looking probably fourth grader um, at least, um, maybe a strong reading third grader. Um, to be read aloud to probably not younger than second. Um, second would probably be okay, but it's a little long for uh, younger children. So this is Thanksgiving Wish. Now, um, I have shared uh, two of these books before last year, but I still wanted to include them because they're favorites. Not this one. I did not talk about this one last year. I don't think I did. Um, one of the two I didn't. This is Turkey Trouble by Wendy um, Silvano. And this is just a funny, cute story of how Mr. Turkey avoids being eaten on Thanksgiving Day. And it's just um, funny, comical, and you get a, a kick out of it. The next one I definitely talked about last year because this is a book that I always shared on Thanksgiving with my students and this is Thank You Sarah because this is the story of Sarah Hale who is the reason that we celebrate Thanksgiving with an official holiday. She was the epitome of persistence. She, I can't, I have to read it again just to, and I haven't done that today, just to remember how many presidents she lived through writing letters and letters and letters to get Thanksgiving made into a proper national holiday because it was being um, forgotten and she didn't like that. And she was a very persistent woman. And I think this is a great story to read um, about a woman at a time when women didn't have the right to vote. Um, just the number of things that she stood up for. She was, uh, she, she even wrote the, um, song Mary Had a Little Lamb and she was a magazine editor. She was just a very important woman and had many children and um, she's the reason we have our holiday so we should always say thank you Sarah on Thanksgiving. But it was finally Abraham Lincoln who um, decided to make it an official national holiday. So this is a great book. And finally I like this one just because it, it follows along with um, another national event in the U.S. that goes along with Thanksgiving, and that's the Macy's Day Parade. Uh, many a people watch that traditionally on Thanksgiving Day, and this is the story of the creator. 
and it's written by Melissa Sweet, and she just does a great job. The illustrations are fascinating. She does a lot of mixed media, and she tells um, the story of his life and the story of how the um, Macy's Day Parade came to be. And so there's author's notes in the end and just all sorts of um, primary sources and um, just very, very enjoyable book. So if you watch the Macy's Day Parade and have children that you want to encourage to watch along with you or they do watch with you, this would be a great book to share at, at least a day in advance. Balloons over Broadway. So I have some Halloween books today, but um, I have a guest reviewer, but I do want to make sure that you can see the titles of these books because you might not be able to see that soon. Um, the first one is Where's Baby's Pumpkin? And this is a lift and flat book. Um, they make many of these lift and flat books where it follows the pattern of they're looking for something and each thing they look uh, behind or under, um, the answer is no, it's not there, but there's something else there until finally on the last page, yes, they do find what they're looking for. So th these are books, as I said, for our youngest listeners. Um, the Itsy Bitsy Pumpkin is simply about a pumpkin, but you can sing it to the tune of the Itsy Bitsy Spider. Biscuits, Pet and Play. I just have something for books that are touch and feel, and there's lots, lots of touch and feel throughout this book. Daniel Loves Fall. Um, this is a little bit longer story to listen to. And um, if your child is a fan of Daniel Tiger, it just tells all the things they're doing um, on thing, uh, in the fall. And finally, this little book called Boo by Leslie Patrice, Patricelli. And it talks about carving a pumpkin and choosing a costume, etc. So um, coming up next will be our guest reader's review and then I will be talking to you while showing some photographs of how I created the um, fall um, vases I guess just a little set of fall vases that will be coming up next right after our guest reviewer so Cooper can you tell us about some books can you tell us about this book right here what's it about about a baby throwing down her Halloween pumpkin where does she find it and all the stuff that you get to open. Okay, you get to open all the stuff? Yeah. Okay, and what's this? About the Itsy Bitsy Pumpkin. What, it's about the Itsy Bitsy Pumpkin. Do you sing With it? The Itsy Bitsy Pumpkin are uh, rolling down the street. That's good. Now how down about... came a boogie goblin feet. He saw the goblin feet, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> how about this book? What, who's in this book? And um, he traveled along. I don't remember. Oh, that's one. fine. How about this book? What's this book Big about? Big trying to down Halloween. About Halloween. And what can you do that's special in this book? What, what do you do? What do you do to those parts? Uh, what, what do you do to that part? Uh, you feel it. You feel it. And how about this book right here? Yeah. What about this book? About Daniel Tiger. What is Daniel Tiger like in that book? I don't know. You don't remember what they, they were going to a fall festival. Remember? Does Daniel like the fall? Yeah. Okay, how about this last book? Only one book left. What's this book about? About a baby trying to howl Halloween. What's he trying, what's he, what does he want to find first? Uh, a pumpkin. A pumpkin? Or does he find one? Yeah, two big. Two, two, two tiny, the light. And then, and then, what does he want to do with it? I cut it. He wants to cut it. Uh, what does he want it to look like? Uh, that one. What do you want your pumpkin to look like? Uh, what? What do you call this? Silly. silly? That's a silly look. What do you want silly? your pumpkin to look like? Silly. Kitty, I I want it to look like kitty. Okay, and then what else does he do in this book? He wants to look for I what? want to be like a kitty. You want to be like a kitty, but yeah. what are you really going to be? Mm -hmm. A pilot. A pilot. He doesn't be a... Ballerina? Yeah. What does he end up being for his costume? Don't you remember? What is he? A ghost. A ghost. Which of these books is your favorite? All of them. All of them. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Some 
chalk paint for this project. And I'm going to tell you, I've never used chalk paint before. Mine might have been bad or something, but the smell was horrible. Um, so that's just a warning in advance, and maybe it was just my particular jar, but I, you need chalk paint. I used a burlap ribbon, but you could use something else instead. I did use my Cricut, and I used the font Cherry Limeade to cut my letters. You could use a stencil instead. You could um, purchase letters that stick on. You need some twine if you if you could always you could leave that off. I use the little zots, which are glue dots, to attach my letter to the ribbon and the jar. You need the mason jars. You will need um, if you're going to put fresh flowers. I just decided after making them, hey, I'm just going to put some flowers in. I used an oasis, which is like a little sponge thing that holds the flowers in place, but also keep some water in them. And then I just purchased a package of flowers from a local grocery store. They sell these mixed fall flowers for $5. So I picked up one package of those and I did go out and cut some leaves off of one of my maple trees. So here is how um, you make these. First, paint your jars. Mine needed two coats and the drying time was not extremely long, maybe two or three hours. After they were dried, I cut my burlap ribbon to size and I used hot glue to um, attach it on the back where it overlapped a little bit. I then attached um, my letters that spelled out fall, but of course you could spell out anything that you wanted doing the same thing and maybe different colors. So I used the zots um, after I cut the letters out just to um, attach them. And um, after that, I had soaked my oasis that I'd cut down to size. I had them soaking for, I think, about an hour or so. And then um, just placed them down inside the mason jars. And I added about a quarter of a cup of the water that um, I put in a large vase to keep the flowers fresh because I'd purchased them the day in advance. So I put about a quarter cup of that water in um, each of the little vases so that the oasis would continue to stay wet. The flowers themselves, in order to cut them, um, I just used a knife and, and cut sometimes a little group of flowers, sometimes bigger. I'm not a good flower arranger. I just wanted to spread these out um, amongst the jars and um, then added some leaves to make a little fall decoration. So. Thank you all so much for watching today, and I've enjoyed doing Vlogtober, and I hope that some of those quilting things that um, I had started um, but haven't finished the entire project, that I will get those done really soon so that I can show you on a later podcast. Um, but I appreciate you watching so much, and um, hope you have fun with some fall crafts. Bye! Mm -hmm.